So yeah. Ten minutes reading inspirational wall hangings. Life, live, love. Yeah. <laughs> right. The poster was like a picture of a mountain, and then it achieve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We got accessories. That's what they're called. Accessories. Those, I remember when they when offices first started hanging those idiotic posters, and I the first time I ever saw one, I'm like, that's the dumbest sack of horse shit I've ever read in my life. I mean, <laughs> or the the kitten hanging hang in there. I thought, like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Would Which I found additionally funny because you know something like that that says you know hang in there. It's like. What kind of shitty place is this where they have to inspire their employees? <laughs> Don't worry, it's not as bad as it seems. <laughs> the worst job I have ever had, I worked um, answering phones for a call before you dig. Uh, for Oregon, Washington, Montana, and Hawaii. And um, especially the people from Montana are a-holes, but trust me, some of the people from Hawaii were really bad too. And um, they had those kinds of posters all over the place. And I'm like, <laughs> so it, it, it was, I remember when I got the job, you walk in and it's the, the cubicle walls were all this, drab like muted green <laughs> and gray and like on your lunch you know you go into the break room you expect people to be chatting with each other no it was dead silence like you could hear a fucking pin drop there could be 20 people in there and nobody was talking to each other everybody was just sullenly looking at their food like in the most depressed state ever and I'm like oh my god this place is horrible but you used to get calls from these from these morons in Montana. You'd say, well, do you have GPS coordinates? Well, no, I'm looking at the map and it shows there's a line right here. And I'm like, nobody can see those lines, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? So the people in Hawaii don't dig, you'll hit ocean? Right, right. Yeah, the people in Hawaii, man. Ugh. And it was never the guys that were, you know... There were a couple of farmers and whatnot. It wasn't those guys that were bad. It was the ones that lived in the cities themselves that were trying to put up, you know, a new high rise or a new hotel or something. They were just complete a holes. Well, I don't see why I have to wait three days for somebody to come out and mark the lines. So you don't blow yourself up, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you don't shock the guy with a shovel. Right. Yeah. I'm sure your neighbors would enjoy it if you cut through their fiber optic line, you know. <laughs> they have a line like that for Florida, and it's just a recording that there's no... no <laughs> yeah, right. So, you guys all have 11 temporary hit points from her uh, inspiring leadership speech. Um... I bet Trump wishes he was a bard. Um, yeah. he he's, the best, he's, he, he's the bigliest bard there is. <laughs> um, what? He really does talk, so he kind of is, just sucks at it. Right? Yeah, right. That's true. So, everybody go ahead and roll initiative, and you will get a surprise round uh, to maneuver and tell me what you want to do to this Amber Golem. Uh, let's see here. It looks like Maisel got an eight. I got a nat 20 on the nest, so I do double damage for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper got a 23. I think that's the best initiative you've rolled so far. Yeah. Uh, what did Mike get? Nine. And 
Carice? 13. And Helga? I'm going to 8. Helga got an 8. Okay. Ah, there it is. Okay. Well, that's okay. The stone golem, or the amber golem, only got a six. So, y'all still did better than the uh, golem. So, Pepperell, with your surprise action, where would you like to move and what would you like to do? Uh, do I get a bonus? Yeah. It is a full, it is a full uh, surprise turn for you. So... Okay, I'm going to cast a Hex on the Stone Golem. Okay. Then I will use Relentless Hex to teleport to the square opposite the Stone Golem. Okay. And then I will sun, uh, light, uh, the, the lightsaber him to death. Okay, so opposite the... So where... Which square do you want? Okay, gotcha. Okay, go ahead and make your attack. Cool. I think 29 hits him. Yes, it does. Or 12 plus die 6. Four more. Okay. You not take poison from my bugs. He is immune to poison damage. Right, so that's, that would be normally on his turn, but he's immune to it, so forget it for this battle. So uh, 16 between those two things. Okay. All and, right. And uh, no, I already used my bonus, so I can't use my whip this turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, Carice, what would you like to do with your surprise turn? Um, let's see, well, that's a good question. Um, can't really get in there. I will cast, uh, Let's cast Witch Bolt. Okay. Can I see him from the, uh, like a direct line of sight through the passage? Yes. Okay, then yeah, I'll go ahead and cast Witch Bolt. Okay. I'm going to go all Palpatine on him. <laughs> yep. Are you spell attack? Like 20... Five? Yes. D12. Uh, six points of damage. Okay. And as long as you maintain concentration on that, you don't even have to make another attack next turn. You just do it. <laughs> yep, and I will just kind of step back where I can still see him, but I'm not blocking the door. Okay. Mike, what would you like to do? <clears throat> um, unless I'm squishing Helga, I don't think I can get in there. Yeah, you oh, could. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me move aside. It's like I simple the thing and came and talked to you guys, and then, yeah. <clears throat> so we'll just not be in the front there. Yeah, you can get through. Okay. She chiseled it out to make sure that it was, uh, you know, minotaur sized. Might be a little, yeah. a little tight on the shoulders. Um, I will go up to his left side. His right side. Yeah. I'll go up to there and I will smack the knights. Okay. Uh, 27 to hit. Yes. 7 
fifteen damage. Okay. This poor guy's going, man, we should stay in fifteen o'clock. We need to find a new job, then all of a sudden we catch up or something. <laughs> uh, your next attack. <laughs> your bonus action. Uh, nope. Alright. Maisel, what would you like to do? Uh, I am going to cast uh, Shatter. Oof. Just, just behind him so that I don't catch my core cut from. Okay. So I'm like, sort of in that corner to just catch him. Okay. Uh... Going to cast that at third level. Okay. So it's a con 15 saving throw. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. Nope, he only gets an 11. Sweet. He's going to eat a lot of damage. So that's uh, 18. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to do with a bonus action or movement? Let's see. What time is it? 2.30? I will give another uh, fighting inspiration this time to carry the third. Okay. So you probably, let's see here, you probably moved to like right there so that you could see this point. Uh, yes. Okay. But that doesn't mean like I'm kind of stuck bottlenecking the... No, you're... Was, no, you... There, she, she carved it out enough that you could be out of the way. Okay, cool. Uh, Helga, what would you like to do? Let's see. Let's run up and attack it. Okay. The triad of pain. <laughs> so, that's 12 to hit. That goes probably no way. Nope. And if I. Nope. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> can't hit with all of them. Poor Helga. Yeah. All right. The main, the first round begins. Pepperell, what would you like to do? I will cast Hexblade's Curse on it, so it's double hexed. Okay. Uh, That's my bonus, then I'll sunsort it. Hold on here. Ah, crap. Does a 15 hit? It does not. Then uh, I don't get my whip. Uh, I that's it. That was lame. Yeah, no win for me. Okay. Pepperell's done. Okay. Uh, carries the third. Are you just gonna continue with your witch bolt? I'm gonna do a witch bolt, and I will use my last spell sorcery points to meta magic. Quicken another spell. Okay. Done. So we'll do the witch bolt first. Okay. Get it out of the way. Uh, 17? Yes. Oh, no, I don't have no, you don't have to roll the hit, you just roll damage. Uh, 12, max damage. Okay. Then I will meta magic. Let's see how much do I have left. Level 2 spell. Which is what that is. I'm going to meta magic a scorching ray. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, a 
net one. Oof. And, and then the next two are uh, 15 and 14. Okay. Uh, both of those miss. The net one. I think that's into my eyebrows. <laughs> Let's see here. Um. What is it? Let's see here. What kind of sorcerer are you? Uh, what do you mean? Like wild magic, blood or uh, blood of dragons. What's oh, your oh, archetype? Yep. Yeah, oh, oh, bloodline. I am a red dragon, hence the affinity for fire. Okay, so you went blood of dragons. Okay. Yep. Helga, make a dexterity saving throw at advantage. I'm sorry, Helga. I got an Nice. So, uh, Helga, you see this uh, scorching ray come flying out and hit the wall right beside you. <laughs> and Carrie's the third's like, sorry, sorry, that was my bad, I did that. It's okay. Just don't cross the strings. Right. I was casting the spell, I sneezed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, the table broke its fall. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what would you like to do? Uh, Mike disappeared for one brief moment. Give her like a minute. Okay, no problem. So, uh, last night's game, they uh, have entered level 19 of Undermountain. And uh, they come into a room and meet a, a Merid, which is a type of genie. And as introduction, this Merid who's sitting in a pool of water, and there are swarms of uh, quippers in the water. As introduction, he launches into a Disney-style uh, dance and musical number. Um, telling them about who he is and the quippers come out on water spouts and sing and dance the refrain in a chorus. It was quite amusing. Mike is back. Mike will attack the thing. Okay. Mike is going to rage first. That's a good idea. That is his last rage. Twenty-three? Yes. And then much higher than that. Uh, 16 for the first attack and 13 for the second. Uh, 16 for the first attack and 13 for the second. Both miss. Uh, for damage. Oh, for damage. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Bon uh, anything with your bonus action? Raging was my bonus. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, but now if he attacks anybody except for me, he gets disadvantaged. Okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Maisel, what would you like to do? Uh, now everybody's too close. Okay. Um, what would I like to do? That's a great question. <clears throat> I don't think I have anything that will... Attack him. That won't hurt other people. Um, you could just shoot him. You have a your crossbow's magical. Yeah, but he's made out of amber. Why don't they just like think off of 
then? Nope. He uh, does not have immunity uh, to it because it is a magic weapon. Oh, it's magic. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. So that's 18 to hit? Yes, that hits. Alright, I guess you have to watch those, would be nice. Is it? Does the plus one go to the attack or the damage? Both. Oh. Keep getting all kinds of great damage. <laughs> so, so then, six. Six, so I think that makes it. Is it? I think the crossbow is plus one. Yes. So seven? So seven. Okay. Your extra attack. Same deal. Okay. Uh, that's a six. Seven plus two. Yes. Okay, for me. And. Nice. Nice. Okay. Anything you want to do with a bonus action? Let's see. Uh, might as well give away another inspiration. I think that's my last one. Okay. And I will give that to Helga. Okay. Thank you. Helga is inspired. Eight or D6? It's a D8. Cool. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Helga, what would you like to do? <clears throat> I'll try to attack. Again. Okay. Twenty one. Yes, that hits. Does 18 hit? Yes, it does. Okay, then I'll do damage. Mm -hmm. 22 all together. Okay, ouch. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you want to throw any divine uh, divine smites on any of that? I probably should, like everybody missed. So um. you could throw you could put a divine smite on each one, and at level one that would be an additional two d eight damage. <clears throat> so a total of forty eight between the two hits for two spell slots. Okay. All right. Let me mark off the slot and then I'll add some more damage. Six, seven, eight. Well, that's cool. That's twenty-one. Another twenty-one? Yeah, I rolled six, seven, eight. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. The <laughs> the golem is literally teetering, but not quite dead yet. The golem is going to make two slam attacks on uh, Mike. First slam attack. 23 to hit. That is. Four. Twenty six points of bludgeoning damage. Remember your 11 temporary, shoot that off. So, so I took two damage from that. Yep. And the second hit is 27 to hit. That hit. For... Another 26 points of bludgeoning damage. Fifteen total. Yes, that's not bad. Okay. Fifteen of like almost fifty. So your temporary hit points are gone. 
Uh, Pepperell, what would you like to do? I'll try again, see if I can finally hit the sucker. There we go. Yes, that hits. Three more because of the second curse. So, 21. Okay, so you drive the sun sword into the golem, and it just, you see cracks go all the way through it, and it falls into a pile of rubble and is no more. Pepperell is triumphant, raises his hands, and says, Yes, I did it all by myself. I'm the greatest. <laughs> so in this room, uh, to the south, you see a, a set of double doors, and in this room, there are six piles. Um, let's see here. In the first pile, you find 17,500 loose copper pieces. I'm glad we have a bag of holding. <laughs> yes. Seventeen thousand five hundred. I'm writing it down if nobody else knows. So. Thank you. There are thirty gemstones worth fifty gold pieces each. There are three suits of plate mail armor that are rusted and worthless. There are nine rusted shields that are all worthless. And you find a child-sized sarcophagus made of black wood inlaid with gold that looks to be worth about 250 gold pieces. Ooh, I want. Yeah, those black baby coffins are always worth worth money. The <laughs> what now? The zombie had baby dolphins sleep in it. Yes. Yes. That'd be epic. <laughs> Especially if you could teach it to dance. <laughs> A dancing baby zombie that dances like the baby from Ally McBeal. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yeah. In these. Animal handling, but I don't think that's the same as zombie <laughs> handling. Oh, close. <laughs> baby handling. Um, in the second pile, you find 12,000 silver pieces lying there loose. There are five rusted suits of ring mail uh, and six rusted breastplates that are all worthless. You find a silvered rapier with a pink glass hilt. Ugly. One fit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for Valentine's Day. There are four rusted great swords that are worthless, and a gilded chariot worth seven hundred and fifty gold pieces. <clears throat> Mike thinks about it for a second, <clears throat> but would also gladly pull the chariot. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Just in, for effect. In pile three. You find 6,600 electrum pieces. Each coin is stamped with the profiled visage of Strahd. There are 75 empty wine bottles. A trunk is filled with six fine dresses and gowns that look to be about 25 gold pieces each. There are 10 pieces of jewelry worth 250 gold each. And another 500 gold pieces in a rotted wooden chest. And there are eight painted ceramic statues of saints that are worth 250 gold pieces each, and each one weighs about 50 pounds. There's some empty statues. Was there anything special about that rapier other than just a glass hilt? It's silvered. That's it. 
Oh, it counts as silver? Yes. Nah. In pile four, you find a pile of iron ingots that are worth 250 gold pieces total and weighing 2,500 pounds. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you got this right. <clears throat> there are 30 holy symbols worth five gold pieces each of gods from various worlds. A set of 12 what? copper chalices with silver filigree worth 25 gold pieces each. Um, I'm so sorry, my internet kind of dropped. Oh, uh, let me start. Uh, yeah, you're breaking up pretty bad. Uh, let's see here. Um, see here 30 holy symbols a set of 12 copper chalices with silver filigree I think that's most of it uh, a gilded skull with red garnets in its eye sockets worth two, two fifty. Skull? No. Yeah, I think I'm all right. Thanks for typing out loud. Though. No problem. Among the holy symbols, is there one for a ball? Um, let me see. Yes, there is. I will take the one for a ball. Okay. And let's see, in this pile, last but not least, there are eight war hammers and six war picks. There's nothing special about them. In pile five, you find 9,000 silver pieces. Uh, there are six non-magical crystal balls worth 20 gold pieces each. A bronze crown with tiny gem-eyed dragons for spires worth 750 gold pieces. A life-sized wooden pony worth 25 gold pieces. <laughs> and six... Who has animate objects? <laughs> six marble vases. There are six marble vases worth 100 gold pieces each and weighing 100 pounds apiece. In the last pile... Um, Everybody make, whoever's investigating the last pile, make a perception check. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll do it if nobody else I'll is. I'll do it. Not me. Thanks. I, do you want to get whoever gets the highest? Yeah, whoever, whoever wants to check it. I might notice wow. Nice to so, 28 for Maisel. That's... Yeah, not 20. Well, not, I'm not going to be that. Nat 20. Be so... Maisel discovers that in the in the sixth pile there are seven thousand coins, but they're made of wood and painted gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I immediately think of like I don't know if you remember when you were a kid you would get the wooden Indian nickels if you went to Baskin Robbins. Yeah, that's exactly what these are. Uh, there are 
mixed in with that is 15,000 copper pieces in 15 different iron pots. <clears throat> There's an obsidian scepter with gold filigree worth 2,500 gold pieces. <clears throat> El, uh, there's 11 rusted helmets and 15 thin leather bound tomes all of them signed copies of a storybook called Snow Dwarf and the Seven Whites by Niche Rachme uh, I would totally take a copy of one of those okay. yeah, I'll take one too that's awesome <laughs> and that's all that is in this room. Just seven thousand pounds of stuff. Yeah, seven thousand pounds worth of loose coin. Right. Is there at least two bracelets in the random pile of jewelry? Oh yes, there was. Uh, one of the piles had ten pieces of jewelry worth two hundred fifty. So I'm sure there's there's some bracelets in there. They're leftover charm bracelets from the Christmas sales from Jared. <laughs> Would you say some of the dresses and gowns have frilly collars and wristbands? Oh, most certainly. I, I need to Lolita up my outfit to suit my, <laughs> my uh, dark mood today. <laughs> so, just imagine a uh, emo god wearing the... Uh, Seinfeld puppy shirt now. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember. The took part of it. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, the only other way out of here is through these southern doors. Of course, you could go back into the amber vault and go upstairs if you wanted. Uh, I will do a uh, perception to peek through the door and see if I see what I see. Okay. Uh, so, go ahead and make a stealth check. Stealth check? Yeah. Uh, oh, not 20. Okay. Nice. Sneaky, sneaky. Didn't hear me even while I was saying sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> You uh, open, the, or just crack open the door a bit, and are quite stealthy about it. And let's see here. Wow, that's a big drow. Um, while we're figuring stuff out, is it okay if I launch my short sword for the rapier? Yes. Would anybody mind? I don't want to. I don't want to bogart anything. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Thanks. So you you crack open these double doors and. <clears throat> Standing out before the now headless statue, you see another dusk elf, <clears throat> and he he is um, standing before the uh, severed head and kneeling on the floor and appears to be praying. Ah, oh, shit! It's another one of those statues. I, I will slowly shut the door and relay what I see to the troop. Uh, make a uh, make a perception check to see if you can hear. He, he's praying and kind of whispering to himself. So make a perception check. <clears throat> uh, 16. Yeah. So he is whispering to himself um, that, let's see here. He's sitting, he's kneeling before the severed head and he's whispering, um, Oh, nameless God, um, please grant 
the the I beseech you to please grant the power to release my master Strahd from this realm and allow him to end his curse, uh, blah, blah, blah. So you sh shut the door and relay this to the rest of the party? I do, but then I'll, I'll, I also want to do something after I relay the info to the party. Okay. <laughs> what do you I'm want to do? Crack, I'm going to crack the door back open and, and use uh, thaumaturgy okay. to throw my voice to the statue. And as the uh, pretending to be the statue, I will tell him that Strahd sucks and he sucks and they both should feel terrible about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> He's terrible, you're terrible, and you should feel terrible. Strahd is a hamster and your mother smells of the berry. <laughs> so, so Thaumaturgy booms out this voice. Uh, <laughs> and you see this Dusk Elf, uh, he draws his swords. Uh, I'm sorry, he draws one sword, uh, a scimitar, and looks around but it does not see where you are, where this is coming from, and then starts to slowly back his way out of the uh, of the temple. Uh, he... I, will, I will reply with "Ye of little faith" from the statue, <laughs> and he heads up the stairs, <laughs> heading out. You can also see that from the main temple floor down here, um, there is a um, there are these alcoves here, which you had seen before. There were um, four amber statues of robed, what looked like robed wizards wearing pointy hats, and there are, is a uh, hallway that leads to the east, the west. And at the south end of the temple, you see a pair of double doors that are closed. So, yeah, I'll relay what I see to the party and tell them I scared the crap out of an elf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the dusk elf heads upstairs and leaves. So what what would you like to do from here? Uh, I'm going in the main room. I stepped into it. Okay. So these black dotted lines, you when you come in to this room, you are under the overhang that is upstairs, and this rubble here is what fell off or came off of the partially destroyed uh, balcony above it. Uh, uh -huh. Which way? Should we try east? Because we know where the, the pit holds that direction and the other underground sarcophagi we found were easterly. Let's do it. Sure. Okay. East. Wagons east. So when you step into the eastern hallway, uh, you see that there is a door here and here and you see another then you see a couple of vaulted doors there and there door number one sure door Okay. 
Okay. So you open this door, and in this room, um, the furnishings of this bare stone room have succumbed to decrepitude. Standing in the center of the room, its head scraping the 10 foot high ceiling, is a vaguely man shaped construct made of dark wood and riveted iron. The helmeted head stares blindly in your direction. Cobwebs stretch from this terrible artifice to the wrecked furniture that surrounds it. Helga, the necklace that you got from the wizard's apprentice starts to thrum and vibrate. Wow, that's weird. Can I do like a perception check? I'm not sure what this would mean. Sure. Um, go ahead and actually make an arcana check. Arcana, okay. I got a seven. Hmm. Um, Carice, make a uh, arcana check. Uh, 13. So, between the two of you, uh, Carice, you look at this statue and realize that is a shield guardian. And that means that the necklace that she is wearing, or that she found, is the control amulet for the shield guardian. Um, give me just a second, I will be right back. You have a friend. Yay, finally. No. <laughs> Robo Butler. And we can make it carry all that other stuff that we couldn't. That's true, yeah. It can yeah. carry the wooden pony.
that's true. So, yeah, so, uh, Helga, you now have a shield guardian. Um, uh, let me tell you what that means. So, what that means is, um, this thing, uh, basically, it is a construct with 142 hit points. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, because you have the amulet, um, the control amulet, um, the shield guardian can have only one corresponding amulet, and if that amulet is destroyed, the shield guardian is incapacitated until a replacement is created. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. The amulet itself has AC 10 and 10 hit points, and is immune to poison and psychic damage. Um, the guardian's solitary focus is to protect the amulet's wearer. Uh, the amulet's wearer can command the guardian to attack its enemies or to guard the guard the wielder against attack. Um, if an attack threatens to injure the wearer, the construct can magically absorb the blow into its own body, even at a distance. Spellcasters can store a single spell within the, in the shield guardian, which they then cast the spell on command or under specific conditions. Um, So, if you have this amulet, and if the if you are you and both the guardian are on the same material plane of existence, or any plane of existence, you can call the guardian, and it will come running to you when you have the amulet. Um, it will go at the it will use the the initiative rules from Tasha's. So 
at the end of your turn, after you have done your actions, the you, the guardian can then go. Um, it has multi attack and it makes two fist attacks at plus seven that to, that do two d six plus four bludgeoning damage. And as a reaction, it can do shield. Um, when a creature makes an attack against the wearer of the guardian's amulet, the guardian grants a plus two bonus to the wearer's armor class if the guardian is within five feet. I'll print out a um, character sheet to keep track of everything. Um, what I can do is I will um, send you a uh, PDF or a JPEG of the shield guardian um, after this game. Sure, that would be great. Okay. That is an awesome find. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I actually didn't realize that a shield guardian could uh, store a spell. Um, the My Saturday night group has a shield guardian that they have not utilized that capability. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Should we move on to the next room, or what do you guys want to do? Go to the so, next room to the south? Yep. Okay. With me. So the next room, you open up that door and it's a white marble bed stands in the center of this bare stone room. Its mattress long since has rotted away. Golden hawks perch atop the bed's corner posts, and the room's remaining furnishings have been reduced to dust-covered heaps. Cobwebs cover arcane sigils carved into the walls. And this, this room, again, the ceiling is uh, 10 feet high. Um, the sigils that cover the walls um, appear to be wards of some kind. Um, but whatever it was that they had, the magic has long since uh, disappeared. And that's all that's in this room. Okay. Uh, I'll just go ahead and move So you have a vault door. here and you have a vault here. Did you want to go to the east vault or the south vault? Well, I already have the left tower, so I think it's going to be so I think I think the only two that don't have uh, any gifts are Carrie's the third and Mike, right? Yeah, we, we didn't take any. Okay. Uh, so Exathanter uh, saunters up behind you, and let's see here. X thirty three B. He stands before the vault and says. Mavris, and the door opens, and you have a north, east, and south um, sarcophagus. Uh, this room has amber glazed walls, a blue marble floor, and three amber sarcophagi. Which one would you like to go to, Mike? Mike touches seven. Okay. The vestige within the sarcophagus is named Shami Amare, the Lady of Delights. Her gift is the power of persuasion. It allows the beneficiary to cast the suggestion spell as an action and saving throws against the spell have disadvantage. After it has been used three times, the gift vanishes. The beneficiary of this dark gift gains an extra finger on each hand, as well as the following flaw. I can't get enough pleasure. I desire others to create beauty for me at all times. Do you accept the gift or not? I feel like he's not much for the persuading people. Although yeah. the six figures of making everybody be in fancy dresses and <laughs> You know, that sixth finger, that's going to be where the pleasure comes from. <laughs> I could have two pinkies up at tea time. That's right. Um, I'm going to go to the south vault. Or you could... 
Okay. Did you want to pick another sarcophagus? The other room has sarcophagi also? Yes. Yeah, so in he stands before... <clears throat> let's see, which one is that? That's A. He stands before that door and says, Shalix. And this chamber opens up and there are three flame skulls in here wreathed in green flame but uh, he waves them aside and and they allow anybody to enter uh caris did you want to go into this vault or did you want to go into the one that mike's in i'll go into the other one i'll do the one that's on the left okay so the western sarcophagus The vestige within the sarcophagus is named Thekri, Queen of the Poxes. Thekri's gift is the power of spreading disease. Um, she, the beneficiary is allowed to cast a contagion spell as an action. After it has been used three times, the dark gift vanishes. The beneficiary of this dark gift reeks of filth and rot. Oh, that's <laughs> Uh, Mike, did you want to pick another sarcophagus? We'll go north. Okay. Uh, the vestige within this sarcophagus is named Savnok the Inscrutable. His gift is the power to shield the mind. Uh, his dark gift takes the form of a mind blank spell cast on the beneficiary. The spell has an extended duration of one year, after which the dark gift vanishes. The beneficiary's eyes melt away upon receiving this dark gift, leaving empty sockets that can still see. That's creepy. I bet that would be good with Raj and my control people. Yeah, I'll go with the eyeless minister. Okay. So, you have a mind blank spell cast upon you that will last for one year. Wait, for me to let me double check oh. this. So you are immune to psychic damage. Uh, any effect that would sense your emotions or read your thoughts, divination spells, and the charmed condition. Uh, the spell even foils wish spells and spells or effects of similar power used to affect the target's mind or to gain information about you. Oh, and that's that's good for a year. I can keep everybody's secrets. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, the South Sarcophagus. The vestige within is known as Zrinhala, the Howling Storm. Zrinhala's gift is the power to create lightning. Uh, the gift allows its beneficiary to cast the lightning belt spell as an action. After it has been used three times, the dark gift vanishes. Um, as soon as this gift is received, one side of the beneficiary's face sags and loses all feeling. Uh, I will pass on stroke face. Oh, okay, you don't want burning feathers? Uh, <laughs> go to the next one. Uh, this sarcophagus holds the vestige of Psychane, the soul hunger. Uh, Psychane's gift is the power to raise the recently deceased. The dark gift allows the beneficiary to cast the raised dead spell as an action. After it has been used three times, the dark gift vanishes. As soon as the dark gift is received, the beneficiary's eyes glow a sickly yellow until the dark gift vanishes. The beneficiary also gains the following flaw. If I help someone, I expect payment in return. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to take that one unless I find a better one later. Okay, so you, have, you can cast Raise Dead three times. Uh, where would you guys like to go from here? 
Did you guys want to check any of the other sarcophagus, see if there's a better one than the one you have? Yeah, we well, my, my Tesla boost is about as good as I could wish for. I'm happy, but I don't know. I, I do want to know what the other ones are. Well, one more in the room with Mike. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the last one in Mike's room is the vestige of Terrakamedes, the grave worm. Uh, Terrakamedes' gift is the power of flight. The beneficiary of this dark gift grows skeletal wings and gains a flying speed of 50 feet. Uh, the beneficiary must eat bones and grave dirt to survive. At dawn, if the creature has not eaten at least one pound of bones or grave dirt in the past 24 hours, it dies. Wow. That's going to be a hard patch. <laughs> I will actually, uh, yeah, I'm not actually going to take that. Okay. And, uh, how old is it? It's permanent, right? Let's see here. It is, it is permanent. I will take that one. Okay. I've, I've been wanting that. So you grow skeletal wings, and you now have a flight speed of 50 feet. <clears throat> That's pretty good flight. Yeah. I will eat one. Well, I mean, you're in Barovia. It's not like finding grave dirt and bones is difficult. I bet we wish we had the pie lady, the pie witch. Right? <laughs> But you had a bone that died. Well, if I took that one, the uh, zombie one is available. Yeah, Maisel, you can get your teeth back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, I, I think I'm the squishiest of all of us, and so I think being able to be resurrected is better. Okay. Actually, reincarnate. Yeah. So here's the thing about reincarnation. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to change my mind. It's not bad, it's just different. Um, and let me tell you. So, <clears throat> don't you come back as something different? Yeah, so let's see. Um, the spell forms a new adult body, um, then calls the soul to enter the body, and you roll a D100 to see what race you come back as. So if you die, you could essentially possibly come back as a dragonborn or a dwarf or whatever. Um, I think that's kind of the reincarnated creature recalls its former life and experiences. It remain. It retains the capabilities it had in its original form, except it, cha it exchanges its original race for the new one and changes its racial traits accordingly. So, that I mean, that's better than the old days. In third edition, you got an entirely new class. Like you were. Oh, yeah, you had to make a new character. Yeah, you were basically completely reborn as something else. But this one, it just changes your. It, now it just changes your race. Yeah. No. Once you once you tell me I'm essentially a time lord, I'm set. This is what I'm. That's what I'm. <laughs> yes. Than anything else. She's going, going to insist people refer to her as the doctor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Being the being the extra tardy, already tardy, uh, bard like super. Nymphomaniac bard had a feel, but <laughs> not when you can be the doctor. <laughs> when the dialogue's invade, you're up. I'm set. I'm <laughs> Where did you guys want to go from here? Suppose we can head to the west half, see what's over there. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so, at the 
northern half, you see that there is a vault door that is open. There is a vault door here. And there are two doors down here. And then at the southern end of the hall, you see that there is a set of stairs that lead up. And there is another vault directly to the south. Where would you like to go? Open vault? Okay. Yep. So the open vault has two sarcophagi. This room has amber glazed walls and a floor of purplish black marble. Two amber sarcophagi stand in the alcoves to the west and east. A, sur a third sarcophagus that once stood in the north alcove lies shattered on the floor. Clustered in the middle of the room are four loathsome hunched creatures. Each one has a single large baleful eye. Uh, Pepperell, make an arcana check. Well, it's not exactly my strong suit. I got a soft one, because I have a negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have never seen creatures like this. Um, uh, let's see here. I don't know if I have any. Warlock yeah. does not equal arcana. <laughs> So last night I was dropping monsters onto the map, and uh, one, you know, they often come out far bigger than they need to be. And the one player is like, you know, every time you do that, I imagine that they're like being dropped down onto the game board by a god, and that the reason why they're getting smaller is because you know I'm seeing them from the camera's angle at the very top of the ceiling, and they get smaller as they land and hit the floor. <laughs> These are Nothics. And they are not um, friendly. Everybody roll initiative. That I can do. <laughs> Oh, there are four Nothics. My bad. Okay. Basil got a 19, Pepperell got an 18. Helga, what'd you get? 14. Okay. And Mike. Nat 20 for a 23. Nice. And carries the third. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, so, Mike, you can hear uh, Pepper will be like, what the hell are these? And uh, what would you like to do? Um, I suppose I will approach until I know whether to attack the thing or not. Yeah, they're they are moving to attack. Uh, I will move to there. Okay. Uh, 
They haven't moved yet. Um, did you want to ready an action until they come out through the door? Yeah, if somebody comes out the door, I'll smack them next. Okay. Maisel, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to catch Shatter uh, in that room. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So they get a con save? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's a con save. 15. Okay. Nope, 13. No. Oh. Okay, that's almost half their hit points. Um, yeah, they're they're not happy about that at all. Is there anything you want to do with your bonus action or movement? I have I have one more starting inspiration, so I'm going to give that to Pepper. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Pepper, what would you like to do? Uh, I think I might. Uh take from, I think it's Cerise's trick book, uh, with Thunderstep. Can I move into the middle of the pack? Yeah. Then I will cast Thunderstep. Okay. Uh, so, now wait a minute. If you move into the middle of the pack, the one in the front, the southernmost one, will get an attack of opportunity on you. Well, if I'm here, are they still within 10 feet of me? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and let's see. the. How far can I teleport? Where's the line? Just an unoccupied space within 90 feet. Okay. Uh, so, and that's a fourth level. So, when I uh, cast and teleport away, they take 4 die 10. Okay. Um, okay. Nope, they got a 15. Okay. Um, there we go. Jesus, okay. I teleport back out the door at an angle to that spot. Okay, yeah, they are not looking well. Anything with a bonus action? Uh, I'll look back in the room and cast Hex on that guy. Okay. Okay. Is so, um, I have, through Valor, my bardic inspiration includes combat uh, inspiration. Just let me explain now. I'm going to, it means you can use it a little bit more flexibly. Okay. So I just put it in the chat for those that have it. Combat inspiration is a little bit different. Nice. Use it on damage rolls too. Nice. Okay. Or to up your to up your AC and avoid attack. Thanks. Cool. Carries the third. What would you like to do? Uh, I will move to the doorway. Okay. And I'm going to cast a uh, burning hands into the room. Okay. Uh, they get a deck save. They get a 17 on their deck save. That beats it. So they take half damage. Which is probably more than enough, to be quite honest. <clears throat> All your guys' AOE spells. Like, open the door, throw in a grenade. <laughs> That's going to be 12 damage, so it, six. Yeah, they they have like three hit points left. They are all <laughs> dead. Yeah, uh, with affinity, I do a minimum five. Right? Yeah. Um, so... <clears throat> The West Sarcophagus 
holds the vestige of Delbon, the Star of Ice and Hate. Uh, Delbon's gift is the power to unleash deadly cold. It allows the beneficiary to cast the Cone of Cold spell as an action. After it has been used seven times, the gift vanishes. Um, until it vanishes, the beneficiary also gains the benefits of a Ring of Warmth. Uh, they also gain the flaw, Fire Terrifies Me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can take that one and scare yourself every time you cast a spell. Oh my god! The West Sarcophagus um, holds the vestige of Kirad, the Star of Secrets. <clears throat> Uh, Kirad's gift <clears throat> is the power of divination. It's, the gift allows the beneficiary to cast the scrying spell as an action. After it has been used three times, the gift vanishes. The beneficiary's voice becomes a low whisper, and, it, and its smile becomes cruel and evil. I kind of just want the flaw, but I don't have a use for scrying. <laughs> right. Uh, the North Sarcophagus, you, you see that it is shattered, and the shatter, uh, the shattered sarcophagus, it looks, it suggests that whatever, the vestige that was inside of it somehow broke free. That, that's kind of foreshadowing scary. <laughs> so then you have a closed vault here, and a, these two doors, and a closed vault to the south. Uh, that vault, um, where is it? Exothanter comes up and says, Harkatha, and the door opens. This room has amber glazed walls, a black marble floor with red veins, and three amber sarcophagi stand in alcoves. Who's going into the room? I'll go check, check out the other ones in case. Okay. Better. I'm going to spin that little bit. Because I'm going to cut a little bit and take stuff. Okay, hold on just a moment. So Helga, you're stepping in there? Yeah. Okay. You step into the room, you see that there's a, a sarcophagus to the north, a sarcophagus to the south, and a sarcophagus to the west. However, before you can do anything, An invisible creature gets to make a surprise attack on you. <clears throat> the first attack is a bite. Twenty-one to hit. That does hit, yes. Okay. For nine points of piercing damage and five points of necrotic damage. It, it, it then swings a greatsword twice. 23 to hit. You might want to use your bardic inspiration to change your AC. Yeah. For 12 points of slashing damage and 6 points of necrotic damage. And its last attack. 
is with claws for 29 to hit for 13 points of slashing damage and 7 points of necrotic damage. Oh my god. Yeah, this guy. So how do you go with the shield guardian thing? What, is he following me or did I? Yes. So, uh, but even, he would grant, one of his reactions would grant a plus 2 to your armor class. My armor class is 19. I'm trying to remember if that negated any. Uh, so it would negate. It, it would have negated the first attack. Um, go ahead and reduce. Let's see here. It was. It was 14. Was the first. Yeah. Attack, okay. Yep. So. Does it become visible when it attacks? Yes. And it is a death slot. Everybody roll initiative. Okay. I'm doing okay. So Pepperell got 12, Maisel got a 6, uh, Mike, what would you get? 15. And Carrie's the third. 10. Okay. And the slot got a seven. So, Mike, what would you what would you like to do? You hear the the thrashing of combat coming from that vault. That does hit. For 19 damage. Okay. Next attack. Uh, 17. Yes. Er, no, that is a miss. Okay. Anything with a bonus action? Um, no. Okay. In your face. Pepperell, what would you like to do? I'll use my bonus action to hex it. Okay. So it is the hexed. And then I guess I'll pledge my way into the doorway and sun sword it. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> yeah, hit. Yeah, that gets him. For 15 points, unless he takes extra from Radiance. He does not. I already used my bonus. That's all I can do for now. Okay. Oh, plus I six for the hex. Okay. One more. Woo! Minus one. Okay. Helga, what would you like to do? <clears throat> I will attack it. Okay. 
What is it? Anyway. What is it? So it oh. it is a death slot, which is a medium aberration. Um, slods are, um, if I remember correctly, they're from Limbo. Yes, they are from the ever-changing tides of chaos in Limbo. It is chaotic evil. Smite it. Yeah. So, uh, remember, as your bonus action, you could cast a smite spell and then make your attack, and if you hit, then you, the smite spell goes on, and you can throw a divine smite on top of that. So you can you can do quite a bit of damage in one hit. <clears throat> Is Helga with us? Not looks like they dropped yet. Do. Give her just a moment. Red slot sound like something you would order at Sweet Tomatoes. Next, we can come back to her. Uh, Carrie's the third. What would you like to do? Uh, Helga's the one that initially got attacked at the beginning, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to like, excuse me, push, push, excuse me. <laughs> my way to back over here. Uh huh. And then when she reconnects, I will roll up uh, a cure wounds for her. Okay. Oh. Pardon me, for, gotta get to a friend. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, why don't you go ahead and roll up your cure wounds, and you can just type it in, or I will type it into the chat. I'm gonna use the one from the glow. Uh, 30 points of appeal. Okay. Whoa. 30 hit points. Cool. Whoops. Why did that do that? Okay. So Helga gets 30 hit points back. Uh, okay. Anybody else hurting? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, the <coughs> slod. <clears throat> so she does 26 points of damage. She, she just texted me. Helga did 26 points of damage to the slod. 
loads of Kaiser. Okay. The slot is going to attack um, Pepperell. It's first. I hope this is awesome. <laughs> first attack is a bite uh, for twenty-one to hit. Tentacle number one. Okay. Uh, tentacle number one hits, so you can deduct some of that damage. It, it is 10 points of piercing damage and eight, and eight points of necrotic. Uh, attack number two is a claw. Uh, that is only a twenty soft twenty to hit. Uh, I didn't deflect that. I don't get a grapple. And the last attack is a great sword, but that's only a sixteen to hit. So I take the second hit. Okay, so he on the claw attack, um, fifteen points of slashing damage, and four points of necrotic damage. Okay. Okay. Maisel. I wanted a death slide hanging off my belt. <laughs> Maisel, what would you like to do? Uh, let's see. I don't know if this is going to work, but can I cast Bleep on it? You can. Okay. I'm going to make it go to Bleep. Like Mantis. Okay. What level are you the casting perfect. Sleep at? I feel like this is going to backfire, and that's why you're asking this question. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast Sleep at level 3. Okay. So, let's see here. That roll 8d8. I roll 8d8? Okay. Yes. How do I do that? I gotta go analog for that. Okay. Okay. You put the death slot to sleep. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if I have a sleepy time. As soon as you hit him, he'll wake up. So yeah, We're all ready to hit him at one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could coup de gras him. Uh, you've essentially uh, removed him from the fight. <clears throat> um, so, while he is asleep, let's see here. You can pull the control gem out of the slot's brain. So, essentially, you pull this gem out of his head, and you gain control, 
he has to do what you tell him to do. So I will send you a uh, a pick of the death slot and his abilities, and you have gained the yeah. death slot. So now we have two butlers. You, essentially, yes, yes. Um, so we will pick this up next week, um, and uh, we will explore what the dark gifts are available in the sarcophagi. Cool. All right. So <clears throat> the other thing to bring up. So I was hoping that next week we might be able to uh, go back to you in person. Um, they have left wash all of Washington in their phase one, um, which means that technically um, in indoor uh, gatherings is prohibited. Having said that, I'm doing that tonight anyways because I've had enough of this horse shit and I can't survive not doing it. Um, but um, I'm going to give them until the 25th and uh, we will continue to play online um, at least until then and we'll see what happens. In order to move to phase two, which would allow me to have up to 10 people, um, they have, each county that, in order to move to phase two, they have to see a 10% decrease in cases over a two week period. Having said that, I do not see that that is even possible for Clark County, which is where I'm at. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but you know, I just, I, I don't see that happening in our near future. Um, so, I guess on the 25th, we'll make more decisions from there, but uh, we will be online again next week. Cool. All right. Good deal. All right. I will see you guys next week. Have a good night. You too. Take care, everybody. See you soon.